And good evening, everyone. ESS Empire State Sports probably presents the Wise Guys for Stock Show. Your host tonight, Joey Rio, I'm Dave Barlett, myself, Pete Goslaw, and our special guest from Sackett's Harbor, the boys' varsity basketball coach, Jeff Robbins. Coach, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right, Coach. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, I was trying to think. That, so I was doing some math today because we're kind of count. We're looking at this like as our start to season two of the Wise Guys. Uh, we took a little break for Christmas and did a couple shows, but nothing major. And um, I was looking your your show number seventy five for us. Nice. Uh, so you'll you'll get a koozie and a hat in the mail <laughs> to celebrate your show. Nice. Um, but. I was looking because I don't. I think I'm pretty sure I went through everybody. I think you're our first Frontier League coach in any sport. I might be wrong. You're not our first Section Three sport though, because we did have Coach. Uh, is it Greco Dave from uh, Old Forge Tom down the web? Yep. Tom we Greco. had him on. We had him on early, and he's down around Dave, Dave where Dave Bartlett lives in Old Forge area. So. You're our first Frontier League coach, so we're looking forward to this. Uh, some insight on the Frontier League in normal times, uh, but obviously right now we're not in normal times. And uh, so let me know, uh, you know, you and I are both basketball coaches here. What, what's going on in Sackett's Harbor? How are things uh, with with school COVID-wise and uh, things like that before we jump into to your history and everything else? Yeah, it's been a, obviously a different year for everybody, and it's been a – really odd winner for as a basketball coach. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest thing I've noticed is my waistline is growing because I'm sitting around uh, eating a lot more than I have been any other winter. Um, no, but, you know, COVID wise, we've done, our school's done a phenomenal job. We have a great administration um, who's had a great plan right from the start. We've only missed, we had to shut down one day for contact tracing. Um, it was like, we found out like, Thursday afternoon, um, a couple months ago for our first case, and they weren't going to be able to contact trace until by, they wouldn't get it done until that evening. So we, our administration just canceled school proactively for that Friday, but we were back the following Monday and that's it. Knock on wood, you know, we've had some cases, but, um, the way, you know, they have all the classrooms set up and everything, um, very few, uh, kids have been, had to quarantine due to contact tracing uh, that number has increased recently but more due to like you know family like stuff over the holidays um so but yeah so we're just kind of, kind of like everybody else we're just waiting for it to end hoping that you know go the governor will let us play some basketball at some point even if that's in maybe march and april there's been some talk that that basketball might replace fall sports or maybe you know possible in some of the sections um, for that fall two spot, keeping my fingers crossed there, maybe the possibility of basketball being lowered to a moderate risk from a high risk. Cause I know the national federation has it as a moderate risk, but our state health department um, has it as a high risk. So if that could somehow change too, that would be a, that would be big. Well, uh, Speaking as the athletic director here, I mean, we are, our athletic director meeting is next Thursday and uh, received our email with the agenda and everything. And uh, long story short, he said, don't plan on a very long meeting. So because uh, normally our meetings at normal times will go to two, yeah. two and a half hours. He's, yeah. So, I mean, that, that didn't give me too much uh, optimism. But, you know, I didn't think about that. Uh, you, you could be right. Uh, if we can get football and uh the fall two sports to realize hey um you know step aside because it's probably not going to be worth it for you that we, you know we could probably get uh a possibility of a, at least a month month and a half even starting february 1st and um yeah so you know it, right now i think baseball go ahead sorry i think i think spring starts um what april 19th so yeah you know we could easily get six, seven weeks, even if we started right at the beginning of March, end of, end of February. I know the, the thought from our administration, our administration, um, our athletic director, superintendent is soccer in Sackett's Harbor and most, you know, and even farther north is, is a long shot to get anything in March and even April. Um, right. 
you know, football might be a different, a lot of the schools that have football have turf fields, a little easier to maintenance, I guess. But um, just thinking about how to try to get a soccer field ready in, in March when, I mean, we have, I'm sure you guys do too. We, you might have a foot of snow on, you know, the, the ground in the, towards the end of March. So. Yeah. And I forgot that you guys didn't play soccer in the fall. We did. So our, yeah. soccer, our soccer is out of the way, but, right. still, but we didn't have swimming on the girls side of things. So football, swimming and volleyball would still be an issue for us. Uh, if we decided to, to go with the falls two sports, but I just, I, like you said, I don't see how above the throughway, I don't see how you're playing football. There's no way. I mean, last year was a, was a freak year for up here. We had, the snow was gone in early March, but that that's not normal. So I don't see it happening. So yeah. are you able to do anything with your kids at all? Or is there anything going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing open gyms. We started right at the beginning of December. Um, we were going to start in, th- in, uh, November, but our superintendent wanted us to wait through Thanksgiving to see how the holidays go, see, you know, what happens with the cases. So we started at the beginning of November or the beginning of, de- beginning of December, just twice a week, um, two hours at a time. And, you know, it's all skill work. Every kid gets their own basketball. We got the balls numbered. Um, you know, it's very little passing. It's just all, all skill work, but it's been good. You know, we, we're not getting huge turnouts, but um, the kids that are committed are there and they're working really hard. It's one of those things we're working on a lot of uh, skills that, you know, we might only do surface level stuff with. We've kind of, especially like one-on-one moves, we've really been able to work on a lot of like secondary moves that you just don't have a lot of time to cover in the season. And even in the off season, when you have open gyms, the kids are itching to, you know, play five on five, get up and down, you know, they don't want to do skill work as much. They're not as uh, motivated, but right now they know that's all they've got. So the the group that's coming, they're working really hard. I got a really good young group of kids coming up like middle school uh, age right now, ninth grade. Um, You know, I got a really good junior and he he comes and works his butt off. So it's fun. You know, they want to be there they want to get better. We, but they wear masks. We have to wipe down the ball. They all wipe down their own ball at the end. Uh, hand sanitize if we're ever going to do any passing everyone's got to hand sanitize all that stuff but um so yeah it's it's been good to be back in the gym with them but so quick question hold on uh, quick question coach maybe i misunderstood you earlier you guys aren't doing your you guys have your students at school or are you doing virtual yeah no they're at, we're at school we've been at school um we go monday tuesday thursday friday we take wednesday as a virtual day every week and um, yeah, so like I said earlier, we've only had one day other than Wednesdays where we had to not have students in the building due to COVID. We did, we did take a Friday where for um, contract contact tracing purposes, but every other scheduled school day, we've been there K through 12, um, every single kid, so. Well, I, I guess you consider yourself lucky because a lot of the schools would, are all shut yeah. down to use them, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely, I'm knocking on wood over here. I hope I'm not jinxing myself because we have been lucky. Uh, that's where being a smaller school helps too, though. You've got your whole student body in on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Whereas yep. place St. Lawrence Central, now we're just a class. We're, cl- we're only a step above you at Class C, and we, we'd have too many kids in the building. So we got, you know, that we're doing that 50-50 hybrid thing to, you know, Monday, Tuesday, you get Thursday, Friday off and vice versa. So. And I just, yeah, I, no, I, no. I just don't, that, that's not good for the kids. Uh, and I'm starting to realize that it's just not good. So, so, okay. Yeah. Consider yourself lucky that you're able to go four out of the five days a week. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, coach, uh, you know, for, for people that are uh, tuning in that uh, may not know you, give them a little idea of, uh, about coach Robbins, your, your pathway, where you went to school, where you went to college, uh, the things you've done, uh, I know we're going to dive into your, your state championship team in a, in a little bit, but uh, talk a little bit about yourself and, and how you got to where you are. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius Harbor boy. Uh, right from birth. So I was born here. Um, went to, went to obviously K through 12, all through Sackets played for um, hall of fame coach, Charlie bridge um, played varsity for three years under him. Um, and really the program He'd had a few good years here and there, but um, been a pretty 
in middling program, but he started, a, he, he actually started a youth program when I was coming up through the youth and the kids around me. And, um, it was when that, when our group of kids got up to varsity, um, is when the program really turned around. We went to the sectional finals all three years that I played. We lost all three years at Manly Fieldhouse, but, um, he ended up, I think his last, so that, I think his last eight or nine years, he went, he went, won like eight or nine straight frontier league titles. Um, won a couple, um, split class division, uh, split class sectional titles. Um, just won a ton of games, you know, so really that program really just took off. Um, so then when I, I went to Jefferson community college for two years, played basketball there, um, then I transferred to SUNY Oswego uh, and played my last two years there. Um, had really good teams both played like uh, SUNY Jefferson. Um, we won the, the mid-state conference my sophomore year, um, regular season and playoffs. We won a, a regional game, lost in the final four of the regionals. Year, my freshman year, we made the regionals, but um, we lost in the, the uh, uh, quarterfinals. Uh, Oswego, um, same thing, kind of went in there, that program. I hadn't been successful and he, he coach, um, Broderick, who I played for, who's now at Nazareth. Um, he brought in a huge recruiting class that I was involved in. Um, we instantly, I think he had won seven games a year before and we won like, like 18 my junior year and right around the same, we finished second in the SUNY X my senior year. Um, so, you know, I was around some great coaches. Like I tell people, um, Obviously, Coach Bridge is in the New York State Hall of Fame, my high school coach. Uh, my coach at Jefferson was uh, Pat Clary. He was a, a student assistant, I believe, under Coach Welch at Potsdam. And Coach Broderick um, was an assistant coach at Lemoyne and Canisius for uh, Coach Beeline. So I learned from from some coaches who who coached under some legends, obviously. I mean, those two, Coach Welch and Coach Beeline, are like, you know, they're national basketball <clears throat> hall of fame guys. Um, so just playing under them was every day was a was, was a coaching clinic. So I've taken a lot from all, all three of those guys. And even, you know, and my assistant coaches that, that I played for as well. Um, so when I graduated from Oswego, uh, you know, I was home and Sackett's obviously like we talked about as a K through 12 school, very small, very little turnover amongst the elementary staff. I, I got my degree in elementary education and um, I got my master's in special education. And uh, so there had been very little turnover at our, at our elementary level. And it just so happened when I graduated um, that spring, two teachers announced that they were retiring in the elementary. So there was openings. Coach Bridge had two more years and then he was going to retire. Um, so he was instrumental in, you know, prepping me and getting me to apply for that job and applied and got hired, um, sat on his bench for two years as an assistant and learned a, learned a ton. So that was different, you know, coach playing at the college level. Like I remember when I came out of college, we played all man to man defense at Oswego. And, um, you know, I was like gung ho when I get my own program, we're going to be, you know, hundred percent man to man, just D people up in your face. And, then you go back to a class D school and realize that you don't, you're not getting uh, the top notch athletes every year, one through five or one through 10, you know, you got kids that can play a role, but you know, you got to kind of uh, revamp to fit, fit the type of kids that you have. So that was big, just coming in for two years and learning kind of, I don't want to say dumbing things down, but just realizing that, um, you know, basketball is a universal sport, but to relate to, kids, you know, at the high school level, you got to relates a little differently than college. So, um, so that was good. And we had two successful seasons there. We made sectional finals both years as an assistant and lost again. So it's kind of funny. I was as a player and an assistant coach, I was 0 for five at Manly Fieldhouse. Um, so I was, that place was like a house of horror. So then I, I, I took over the program my third year as a teacher, we went six and 15, my first year, first losing season in forever, um, started to question, you know, and I knew we, Coach Bridge knew. I mean, he got out, you know, with he knew he wasn't bringing back a real strong squad. Um, but even then, I had a lot of doubts and questions. Like he'd been so successful, and I come in and we won six games, and 
Um, but then the next year I brought all those kids back and we made the New York state final four, went like 20 and six, uh, lost in the state semifinals. Um, so that really set the program, um, on the next level, you know, we, like I said, coach bridge had one section, like one split class sectionals and won a lot of league titles, but, um, never gotten to that next step. And that kind of showed the kids at, at our, in our program, what, what was possible, um, that we could play with anybody in the state in class D and then, um, yeah, so we did, you know, the next year we won a split class section title and, you know, a couple years later, um, we won the state title. So, and, you know, ever since the last couple of years, we've been down. This would, this would be my 15th year as the head coach. Um, we, we haven't won a league title in like three years. Um, you know, we've been kind of a middling team the last couple of years, but we've got some, we've got some kids coming up that are going to put us back on the map. So 15 years, you've been head coach at Sackett's Harbor coach. Yeah, this would be my 15th year. If we, if we get to play. All right. So what's in the water out there? Because yeah, I think I'm one of, you still look like you're 20 years old. So I'm trying to figure this out. What's in the water <laughs> out there. It's called hair. Well, I, <laughs> well, I appreciate that. If, if, if you can see me from above, I had to take our cameraman the first, for a lot of years, I would have them right behind our bench. I had to go and put them across the gym. Cause I was sick of staring at my bald head when we from behind, when we watch film. So yeah, it's definitely thinning out in the back, but I appreciate it. Yeah, okay, because we, we all know about balding here on this show. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, coach, coach, talk talk a little bit about uh, and and I was on the I was on the call on 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 this game, but you know, talk about your your trip to the Final Four and winning it. And I I believe it was 2012, right? 2012, and you beat. Uh, section 10 team in, in Matter Waddington to, to win the state championship. And uh, I, and I, and I was, I did broadcast that game. I, uh, I remember doing it and uh, it, it was pretty cool because that felt like a true North country. I, I mean, that trip, that, that felt like a true North country game. I, you know, the only, the only other way you're going to get that feeling is like Mariah versus you or, you know, a team from section seven, that's what it felt like. So. Talk, talk a little bit about that team. Uh, I, I know you were proud of it and to be able to go down to Glens Falls uh, and talk about that journey. Where did you win your sectional championship to, to get there? Was that in the dome at this point? I was in the dome. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, it was crazy. So that group of kids were in eighth grade when we made the final four the first time and lost in the semis and um, two, I had two twin brothers uh, that were in eighth grade at the time, the first time we made it, that were seniors on the state title team, D'Alessandro boys. Their their brother um, was our is our school's all time leading scorer. He was our stud on the on the 08 team that made the final four. So those guys were the ones that they watched all this happen and they saw, you know, us go to that next level and go to this, the state final four and playing Glens Falls. So that kind of opened that those that was a group that it opened their eyes. So they were really really talented coming up. So we had five senior starters in 2012. You know when they were we were in fifth and sixth grade. They were going to these, you know, youth tournaments, playing Watertown, Indian River, bigger schools, and and winning by a lot. And you know, they were physically developed for their age, and they were pretty confident. Um, they're all managers for for Coach Bridge, and um, but they they had they had some attitudes, and there was some issues amongst them, and. Um, you know, Coach Bridge would have to kick them out of practice. They'd get in fights over on the side. They'd be playing like two on two and getting fights. And, you know, and then um, so they got up to varsity and there was some jealousy issues. You know, we were really, when they were sophomores, we were good. When they were juniors, we were 19 and two. We, we would blow the doors off teams. We'd won games by like, you know, they'd be sitting on the bench for the whole second half because we they would just, we'd be up by 50 some at halftime. But then when, but their junior year, when our, when push came to shove and their backs were against the wall, um, they didn't come together. They, you know, they would, they'd branch off, try to do it themselves. You know, they didn't have that camaraderie. Um, so their senior year, that was just something big that we pressed on them. And, you know, to, to the kids credit, like they just matured that group, you know, we got good, really good contributions from some younger kids off the bench, but it was those five seniors. They just matured, 
um, stopped caring about, they literally, they came, a couple of them came to me a couple of games in the season. Like we were kind of the first couple of games of the season, we weren't playing real well. And I think still some of that like jealousy and stuff was going on. And it was something I, I tell my kids about to this day. Um, my point guard came to me before we were on the road. I think we were at Sandy Creek and it was a JV game. Uh, was getting ready to start. And he wanted to talk to me and I'm like, Oh man, what is this about? And he just said, coach, we're, we're done. Like caring about who scores we're done, you know, with all that. He goes, we just want to win. Like we're going to give you everything we got. And it was like, from that day, all of a sudden we just started becoming a different team. We started clicking. And uh, so, yeah, so we, you know, we built on, we, I would say had a really good league season. We played our senior night. We played New York mills at home. We had scheduled it at home for senior night in late January and they were ranked, they had defending state champs and they were ranked first in the state. They had like four starters returning a six foot nine, like 240 pound center, Matt Welch. He was just, he's their head coach now um, at New York mills. Um, and they came up to our place and we beat, it was a fantastic atmosphere. Like the people were, you know, piling out the doors, like just place was packed and we beat them real close game back and forth. Um, so then we go into sectionals and we meet them at the dome and it was literally the score at halftime was the same score at halftime at our place. We were down one at our place. We were down one there. It was like 30 five to 34, same exact score. Um, we came out like early in that game, buried a ton of threes. They came out, buried a ton of threes. Like they were, we were just worried about their big kid. Mostly the game at our place. He had like 30 some points. Um, their guards didn't do a whole lot. Well, they had, um, they had a guard who ended up going to play for Babson. And he, he was like the second leading scorer on the Babson. They were division three national champions a few years ago, Nick Commonell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a sophomore at the time. He hit like five threes in the first half against us in the dome. So I'm like, man, I don't know how we're going to do this. Like pick or poison. You know, we got to, we got to double team the big kid, but now this kid hitting shots outside. Um, luckily we got the big kid in foul trouble and um, we jumped up and we just kind of, ha- we held on and beat him at the dome. And that was, that was huge. They were, they were really, really good that year. And we beat them twice in like a month. So, um, so yeah, so then on from there, um, you know, we went to Glens Falls and it was totally di- like just being able to go in 2008 and um, learn how I, I needed to be more prepared. Like I just kind of, we were on a whim in 2008. Like we, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I learned some, you know, I'd make some reservations at like um, ahead of time at restaurants. It was just much more organized. We made like a, a winning itinerary. Like if we won the semifinal game, we had an itinerary. If we lost the semifinal game, we had an itinerary when we went in 08. And uh, this, when we went in 2012, we just had one itinerary. Like we're going down there. We're going to win on on Friday in the semis. And then, you know, we're going to play Saturday night. Like that was our only um, mindset. So we won a really close game against Batavia and Notre Dame. They were really good. They're like usually a C school private school uh we beat them uh in the semifinals and then we played and then so yeah set up game against Madrid. and Madrid just demolished uh their semifinal team that year um and honestly i was i was feeling really really good um going into the weekend i felt great we got down there thursday night or thursday afternoon slept great thursday night woke up friday morning felt great won the semifinal game then uh, went to bed that night, you know, watched a ton of film, had some team meetings, went to bed. And I woke up at like four in the morning with this knot in my stomach that uh, Saturday morning, like, man, you know, this is team from our backyard. Like we share the same newspaper and, you know, we're in the state finals and it, I was just, I was a nervous wreck. And um, I just tried my best not to show it to the kids. And uh, they went out, we'd go out and we scored two points in the first quarter. I don't know if you remember that, but. Like, uh, we just, it was awful. And I'm just thinking here, like, man, we're going to, we got to state finals and we're going to play our worst game of the year. Not, and, and luckily we played good defense. So Madrid was only up seven, two, I think it was after the first quarter. Um, but then we got to go in the second quarter, took like a two point lead in a halftime. And then the third quarter, we, we just caught fire and 
hit a bunch of threes and um, hit a couple threes and played really good defense and, you know, just kind of changed the tempo of the game and we got the lead and held on. Well, the one thing I remember, uh, Jeff, about that Matter Waddington team, it, that year they became a D. They, they had been a C school um, because I, I won my first Class C championship that same year in 2012, pretty much because okay. Matter Waddington. Pretty much because Matt of Bonington had become a D. That helped me yeah. out. So, um, but anyway, the one thing I remember about that Matt of Bonington team, and uh, this is where Aaron Jones, uh, you know, uh, much like, you know, the better coaches that you're going to see, and you talked about this earlier, play into what you had. He played that 3 2 defense the whole season. He didn't press, he didn't play man. Every time I watched him, every time I saw him, he played that 3 2 defense. and uh, I think that was, if I remember right, you struggled with it, obviously, yeah. in that first quarter because it, yeah, yeah. it was a different 3-2. He could go flat. He could uh, raise it up a little bit, it, and they were talented, so and they could shoot the ball. Yeah, um, they so did. They changed the looks on it, so we we were not comfortable at all. Like, it wasn't even like that we shot bad. I mean, we just – we were out of sync. Um, we weren't really getting the shots that we were used to getting um, – so, but then, you know, we had, like I said, I had five seniors, so they just kind of adjusted, but yeah, Madrid was, they were so disciplined and so um, fundamental, you know, every shot that went up, they, five guys would get a body on you, you know, um, they weren't the most athletic team, but really, I mean, we, we weren't very big. Uh, my, my, I, our, my two tallest players were my point guard and my shooting guard and they were six, one, you know, so I was, we were like six, one, six, one, six foot, five, 11, five, 11, you know, but um they were just they were really really solid and fundamental it was a good game um you know luckily we had some kids just kind of start hitting some shots and that opened us opened it up for us i remember uh at uh, they had a kid by the name of alex brock and that year in our exceptional we have exceptional senior games up here in section 10 and he was on my team i i had the pleasure of coaching because i was a sectional championship coach and uh so I just said, all right, boys, go on out, match up man to man. And Brocky looked at me and said, Coach, I haven't played man to man all year. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I got to find a number. <laughs> so, so yeah. So when I say they played three two, three two all year, they sure as heck did play three yeah. two all year. But well, you know, so. funny story with that was uh, so going into that year, the summer, we were down at Lemoyne team camp and um, Tom Blackford, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's, coaches at Hamilton. He's won uh, like 600 games. I think he's won over 500 games. I know that he coached that Fayetteville main list for a few years. Now he's back at Hamilton. Uh, he's a legend. Um, you know, he was at, he was coaching at FM at the time. And, you know, I ran into him at, at Lemoyne camp and he gave me a great piece of advice. He said, um, what are you going to do to beat the mills? I said, I don't stop the big kid. He goes, no, I'm serious. Like you need to, figure out what will beat New York mills. And that's what you need to work on and do it all season long. And uh, so really that's what we like. We, the, the year before when those kids were all juniors, like we would do really aggressive presses, you know, like I said, so we beat bad teams by a lot, but we, we totally scrapped those and just went, we went some with some less aggressive press, you know, presses that are more just to kind of mess with the other team, throw off their tempo of uh, a two, three, zone with uh, where we would you know uh, be able to double the post on that big kid and um keep a hand up on shooters and stuff like that so we did that we did play some man to man we did mix and match because i did have a personnel that could do both um and we did play a little bit of man in the state championship game um but yeah for the most part because of him i took that to heart i was like you know what in section three because i'm just at that time i'm thinking you know we just want to win sections like never think of winning a state title you're just thinking <laughs> want to win sections and uh, so that's really what I focused on what what can beat New York Mills because we knew we were going to be one and two in section three like it, it was going to come down to us so you know coach one of the things that stands out in 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 what you were in what you're talking about is you know you you mentioned a player that came to you and and told you you know we're done with all the nonsense and we're ready to play as a team I think that was probably a pivotal point in in that season um because a coach can say it to the kids all, all, all he wants. You guys need to play together. You guys need to put the pettiness aside. It's not going to mean anything. But for them to figure it out on their own 
and and come together as a team i you know that's that was probably that, that was your season right there absolutely and that's why i tell that story all the time at, to my you know every year to my teams um i tell it at my camp um there was one other moment too i remember we were playing uh, alex bay who you know they they struggled a lot of years but they had a really good team that year and they were the second best team in our division and um we were playing them. They'd only like had one. We'd, we were the only team in the league that had beat them at that point. It was towards the end of the season. And we went in for a lay or our best, our leading score. I want to say our best player. Cause I, you know, I think we had a lot of best players, but our uh, leading score, uh, Zach Del Sandro went in for a breakaway layup and he just got taken out. Uh, this kid hammered him. You know, it was legal. It was, you know, it was just a hard foul. And, the other four players were at half court because it was a breakaway. They sprinted down and picked him up, you know, and it was like, I remember looking at my assistants too. So it was that. And then when, you know, when my point guard came, those were the two moments I was like, we got something here. Cause you're right. You can say it until you're blue in the face, but until it comes from them. And then they just, from that point on, they start coaching the team. Like I, I just sit there and, you know, make sure I got the right five guys on the floor, but they pretty much, they're calling all the plays they're calling the inbounds plays. They're, you know, they're pretty much doing everything. They're running, you know, practices. I, you know, obviously I'm telling them what drills to do, but they're the ones, if a kid wasn't busting his butt, they were, you know, those, those seniors were on his tail. Um, so it was great. So sounds like the boys knew what they had and they finally came to their senses because a good team like that would just take over and, and, and not have to, you won't, it, it's easy to coach a team like that. Yeah. Uh, for sure it is yeah. yeah I always tell my teams you'll know when we've gotten good because I'll just shut up and you know most years I I don't get to do that but there's been a few years where like towards the end of the year I just get to sit on the sideline and you know yell at the officials <laughs> so I do we do that from the broadcast booth too yeah, <laughs> yeah we yell at the officials a lot uh well I do uh, okay. Dave's I, 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 Jeff, I always, I always called that uh, hands in pocket coaching. Yeah. I always, I'm like, I, I know I got it going when my hands are in my pockets and I'm just yep. standing there on the sidelines watching good basketball. And I don't, yeah, you, know, you know, they, they're ready. Like, and you just, yep. you're excited for the game because you know that they're ready. They're prepped uh, mentally and physically. So. Um. I got a question it, it, being a guy that's uh, back in the old days when he actually got a newspaper and would read the Watertown times. Can you describe for us section 10 boys, uh, which Pete and Dave are also section 10 guys. What are you guys doing at the end of the frontier league season? Do you guys have your own frontier league playoff? And then the winner of that goes to section three playoffs or do all the D schools, or is it just a, can you describe what yeah. you guys do for so, the postseason? So um, we have, you know, you can schedule 20 regular season games. Well, we only can schedule 18 because we have to leave two for the Frontier League playoffs. Now, years ago when I played, it's changed in the early 2000s, but there used to only be three divisions. There was a 16, what was called the B division. It was like a five-team A division um, or no, like a six team, a division, then like a five team, double a division. Well, then they broke it in the early two thousands into four divisions and they, but they still kept the playoffs for each division. Now there's four playoffs instead of three. Um, so the, the D division, which used to be the B division is exactly the same. Uh, we still have six teams, uh, once in a, like last year, Sandy Creek dropped down to a D. So they slid into the D division, but some of the other divisions, uh, like last year, the C division only had three teams and the B division only had three teams. So they, but they still have a playoff, but one, one, uh, how do they do it? I think one team. Um, Eyes right the, to the finals. Yeah. The, uh, the two, the one and two just go right to the final. Yeah, one's a bye. Uh, no, they don't even do the buy. I can't remember. I don't know if they do a buy in the two, three play and then I play the winner or they just do the one and two. I think they just do the one and two. So they just save one game. Um it's a little antiquated. I, you know, so a lot of myself and some of the other coaches, we've tried to kind of get rid of it. It used to be a really big deal. Like when it was three divisions, it was a bigger deal. Um, 
you know, to, to be frontier league playoff champion for, you know, whether that was the B, the A or the double A, you know, with the four divisions and um, like I said, some divisions only have three teams, four teams, everybody makes the playoffs. It's not, it's not as big a deal. Uh, the fan attendance isn't always as great. And then, and then if you lose um, in the semifinals, you know, you're out of a game or if you, if you're in the B in the D division and you're f- five, six, you don't even get a You don't you lose two games. Um, I, I, that was what I was going to ask you. Cause I yeah. saw like, you're scheduling 18 games without the chance of getting. 20. Yeah. So then awesome. you're scrambling, you're trying to find like, so I played old forge last year. We lost to Copenhagen, the semis. I, I had, we'd already made arrangements tonight uh, a couple days before, if we'd lost that game, we were going to play old Ford the very next night, just so we could get a, another game in. Um, but, but no, so for section, it has nothing to do with sectionals um, for section for section three, you got to have a 40% winning percentage to get in. I don't know if the section, what section 10 is. Um, we're we're all that, in. <laughs> oh yeah. We used to be like that until, um, uh, I, a couple years into my coaching career, they changed to that 40%, but you can get in 40% overall, 40% in your league play or 40% against your class. So there's three ways you can get in with that 40%. Um, so. <clears throat> well, interesting. Cause I, I always wondered that I, I'm like, why is uh, Mel Bustler showing these frontier league playoffs? And then yeah. I see Sackett's Harbor lose. And then I still see you playing in yeah, the, in the section three. So I I always found that confusing. So I, great yeah. clarification. Thank you. This, um, um, we got to ask a, a kind of a section ten question because I know he's a graduate of there, in that he was going into is your school's Hall of Fame is your initial Hall of Fame coming up, or was it canceled? And will it be was re- canceled. It was going to be our third year. Um, it'll be this spring, hopefully this spring. Um, but yeah, so it will be our third induction class. Okay. So then, and Kenny Kring is getting in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I met Kenny for the first time in 2008 when we made the final four, I met him the, the night we got down the night before the game and what a great guy. And, uh, I actually live next to his brother. His brother's my neighbor. So Harold Kring and, uh, Kring family's outstanding family. And yeah, so his, his whole team is getting in. Um, and I believe he's getting in as an individual as well. So, yeah, Pete, yeah. Dave, and I, we yeah. interviewed him earlier in the year and, uh, and he brought that, he brought that up that he was going into the hall of fame and yeah. uh, we, we could be happier. What a great guy. And it's, Class. it's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's funny. Right. I'm sure Pete, Dave, uh, Pete, Dave, we, we're going to get to this point and what a great way to lead into it because, uh, we talk about this all the time, especially with our basketball coaches. But it's funny you mentioned that you met him in Glens Falls. Okay. <laughs> I know where you met him. Yeah. Um, bar food. <laughs> Was it bar food? <laughs> it wasn't bar food, which is funny because, uh, you know, so I have a group of, of uh, actually his um, nephews would go whether we, you know, we go every year. And his nephews go with me in this group. And, um, and that's what they always joke. They got to go see uncle Kenny at bar food. So yeah, the first, but um, we hadn't gone as a group yet. When we went in 08, we had, we, we started going the very next year as a group in 2009. But um, so, yeah, I've seen uncle Kenny or well, they're what they call uncle Kenny and bar food a few times. So he's got his own stool there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're looking at uh, three guys that have been uh, itching for Glens Falls and to know that we're going on, you know, we should have been back there last year. We're going to miss it again this year. No. We had the three years in Binghamton. I know I bumped into you in uh, Binghamton. I went all yeah. three years in Binghamton. But, and for you, I'm assuming the Binghamton trip is closer. It's a lot. I mean, yeah, yeah dis- distance wise, but I'm going to assume you'd still rather have been in Glens Falls. Yeah, I was I was pretty heartbroken. I'll I'll give Binghamton credit. They won me over by the third year. I was impressed, um, but still, like I don't know. There's just something about Glens Falls, man. That place is magical. Like just walking in that arena and uh, hearing the announcer's voice is always that same guy, um, you know. And the fact that we won it there, but even before we won it, you know, we won a lot. We went a lot of years, and um, the town really um, B- Binghamton doesn't. Um, 
welcome it as much as Glens Falls because Binghamton's a bigger city. You know, right. Glens Falls really rolled out the red carpet. Now Binghamton has a lot that Glens Falls couldn't couldn't offer um, as far as like hotels right there and you know restaurants and bars right there. Um, that's a little trickier, but um, but Glens Falls is yeah something special. Well, and I. I, I personally want to thank you that uh, the years that you went because uh, it, you you got me to go to a basketball game and and yeah. not bar food. So oh, there's games yeah. down there. At least. Yeah. You said something about an arena, Pete. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. I saw I saw my first Saturday morning games a couple of years ago, and it was it was the sign that I was getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sat, yeah saturday morning games i didn't know those yeah. were going on yeah yeah didn't even know had no clue <laughs> <laughs> well coach we gotta we gotta wind it down but uh it, it's awesome I, i'm glad that you came on i know there's a short notice you and i just barely hooked up on this i, I know we had talked a couple months ago but then we went on a little break and uh I know you and i just talked yesterday and uh, so glad that you came on with our, our first frontier league coach, uh, dipping South a little bit from the North country. So, um, but awesome stories. And uh, we're talking to a state champion coach here too. So I, I think that's really cool. And hopefully we can get your buddy back a sign here soon. I've asked yeah, him to gotta get him on here. I, I gotta, I gotta text him right now. I forgot to text him that I was even gonna be on this tonight. So, well, let yeah, let him know that uh, you beat him to the punch because I have asked him to come on, but he was too busy. He was too yeah. busy for us. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> he's remodeling his house. I know that, and he's coaching youth youth uh, girls teams, daughters yep. teams. So, so but no, I appreciate it. This is this is really cool. So, I appreciate it a lot. Our pleasure. Yeah, well, I really well, appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. Yeah. And, all and, right. Well, thanks, guys. Good luck on whatever happens. So we don't, we don't, we're none of us. We're all stalemate, also. So we're just, you know, we're just waiting ourselves. So good luck. I'm, I'm holding out hope. I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but I'm holding out hope. I hope, I hope, God, even if we can just play five games or something, you know, just give these kids an opportunity. Yep. Give them a chance. I agree. So. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. That's all right, guys. Well, have a great, have a great night. Thank you. That's going to be it here on ESS Empire State Sports and the Wise Guy Sports Talk Show. For Joey Rio, I'm Dave Barlett, and myself, Pete Gosa, and our special guest, Jeff Robbins. Good night, everybody, and stay safe. <laughs>